with Escher Striker Gunvolt. Well, it's going to be Escher Striker Gunvolt 2. Let's see. Good. Maybe this game is going to involve this other, like, AI idol over on the right? The one with the red wings? And Copen, of course, who was a pretty cool boss. More engaging than Proto Man, anyway. So let's dig right on in. Azure Striker Gunvolt 2, I'm excited. I know this is a bigger game, hopefully a much, like, like more involved one as well. Hey. Originally released 2016. I know they released like a side game last year or something and sometime soon a third entry is going to be coming to switch So looks like we can play as either Copen or Gun Vault Um, let's just jump right on in At an undisclosed conference room Undisclosed conference room. I love that that phrasing there Top tier writing love it This must be the Sumeragi Brass. And of course, folks, let me know if I have any, like, uh, audio balance issues. So Nova actually isn't in charge, or wasn't in charge of Sumeragi, he just kind of ran their ADEPT uh, recruitment and development program, I think? Please tell me we get to fight these guys and like, like roided up giant mechs at some point. Oh, the Kamishiro. I'm actually going to say that, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen then. We're going to have to fight these three guys in some kind of giant war machine at some point. Or maybe not. Hey, look who's back! They were one of my favorite, like, characters, personality and design-wise in the first game. Oh, so they're going to, like, usurp Sumeragi. Infiltrator. An ominous airship looms on the horizon. With a fragile piece hanging in the balance, the Azure Striker takes flight once more. Inside the Seraph, Sumeragi's massive airship. Oh, hey, it's these guys again. Does Sumeragi have any, like, business left? Didn't we destroy, like, a ton of their facilities? <laughs> including, like, massive raw material refinement, uh, outfits in the first game? We've still got Lumen with us. I take it like early on she might act as mission control this time instead of uh, the Quill folks. Yeah, there we go. That's that dodge. Oh, 
So I wouldn't say GV is actually like super powerful by the the standards of this world, right? Or even by the standards of the the uh, Septimal Adepts. It's just that he's borderline invincible thanks to Pervasion. Which, I suppose, resilience is um, strength of, of a sort as well. Boy, Sumeragi sure has lowered their guard standards. So this time... Okay, so apparently we can use the right trigger or... Um, the circle button to activate the flash field. Looks like it controls just like the first game did. Who on earth is this? Chow. Okay. So she's maybe commandeered this airship with us? So these folks are our new mission control then. Soundtrack's great. We've got some of that siren core going on in the background. Sorry, I don't mean to skip some of these, like, audio clips of doing that accidentally try while I try to get the entire message on screen. Guess you won't be helping much this mission. Oh, nice! Let's do it! Let's strike! Nothing up there. Anything up here? No? Sumaragi's airship, the Seraph, has been skyjacked. It's their fault. We won't let them get away with it. Oh, we're back to, uh, the... Is this the Kerberos? EP powers my Septima and my lightning abilities. It drains any time I use Privation or my Flash Field. Looks like they're giving us just a little bit more in the way of, like, direct tutorialization here. Yeah, double tapping down on the D-pad will instantly recharge my EP. So long as I tap that, I can stay at full charge. Going to try to play around with different weapons a little bit more than I did in the first game. Well, unless we get one that's just as, like, damn near broken as the, the Mega Buster knockoff, which we'll probably get again. Now, if I recall, we can actually, yeah, zap those things to send them into, like, a reboot state, allowing us to pass by pretty easily. Sumeragi can control gravity. Well, Carrera, at least, one of the Septima could. There we go. So a lot of enemies from the first game making a comeback, like Sumeragi security, basically. But since it seems like the Lust villain is totally unaffiliated... Um, hold on. I saw something up there. I'm I'm hoping that like they have their own goons or whatever their organization does will. Wonder what the boss is gonna be. Oh, 
Anybody willing to bet a mantis? <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. And again, we get not exactly exposition, but plenty of great characterization uh, in the form of this radio chatter as we go along. Oh, who on earth is this? New villain. Right on. Come on, what you got? So we're actually going to be fighting an adept as our first stage boss, maybe. Unless they just loose some of the new tech on us. Yeah, like that. Oh, sick. So what is this thing? Some kind of walker, right? Should I pursue it? Yeah, of course. MC says new Metal Gear Solid. This is the weapon to surpass Metal Gear, and they just, like, kind of clumsily threw it down to the bottom of the docking bay. Okay, so instead we're going to take on probably the Adept. Uh, that's... That's taken over the airship and set it on this crash course. Maybe Copen's gonna get his hands on that mech and we'll have to fight him first. MCS, any idea when you'll get into Bulletstorm? Oh, it might be a while, man. I've had that... Technically had, like, the full clip edition or whatever it is just sitting uh, in my library for... I think over two years now, and I've just never taken a look at it. I got it free as part of, like, the PlayStation Plus, uh, like, monthly game rotation. Good to see that interactions between these two are just as disturbing as ever. Oh, yeah. MC says, I will spoil one thing to make it higher on the list. Dinosaur with lasers? I mean, that's pretty good, but... Didn't Turok do that first? Was that Turok? Oh, what is this? Oh no. Oh no, they're turning everything into like 90s cyberspace. Oh, and of course he's using like... Internet slang. Oh, hi, Tenjian. Really? Tommy was so references. Damn. Oh, and you have the controller. Now that is different. All right, where's Internet Boy? Oh, is he in the computer? Wait, do, do you hear those little, um, like, electric blips in the background, like the sound effects? Sounds almost exactly like sound effects from, uh, the Next Generation Era Enterprise Bridge, and in fact, maybe. Okay, he just spawned in, like... Well, I wouldn't call it a chicken walker, but like a dodo walker? Oh, a plasma legion. Damn. Okay.
Okay, so at least we're learning this fight pretty easily. MC says, oh no, dick robot. Oh, I, I kind of see that. Yeah. Oh, we got our heal. And aside from taking some blows because I didn't really get the... The, the whole idea of its little plasma shots down until uh, phase two. That was a nice, easy fight. So clearly, um, the, uh, the internet adept, or like the techie adept, was able to conjure that thing uh, from nowhere. So that thing's supposed to be, like, more advanced than the Mantis, right? Because it certainly didn't seem like it, but then again, I, I can't say because I've not fought about 30 of it. Hey, opening stage clear. That was nice. Nice. Uh... Don't know how it's... Oh, we've unlocked the Let Me Lend You My Wings trophy. Um, I might like it just a little... Rank S! Hey, now! There's something we're never gonna see again. Um, I, I can't say if it's better or worse than the first game's opening stage. I could say that I like it a lot more, but I tend to feel that way about most sequels that iterate upon, like, solid systems. Uh, a curtain of fear descends upon the city as cannons roar over evening's gloom. Villainous kidnappers will receive no quarter, so there's a second intro stage. Oh! Copen gets an intro stage. So, okay. Copen has a dash. And can air dash. And has a totally separate pause menu. Oh boy. So instead of like sort of electro points, he has a bunch of bullets. IT. Um. Right. MC says, so we were right about the intro part. Yeah. And it looks like... So the bullets recharge naturally over time. Just much... Oh, or we can reload. So like, huh, huh, huh. We can use dashes consecutively. Then reload. I see. MC says, but you need the jewels to get past it. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, hopefully, or I should say hopefully not. Okay, so it seems like Copen's going to be almost exactly like Zero in most of the uh, Mega Man games where he's playable, in that he's probably going to have a much higher skill floor, but also a much higher ceiling as well. Um, because it looks like you can get a bunch of different skills, uh, put them into a skill set, uh, expend bullets to use them, and then reload to instantly get back like all of your bullets. So timing and mastery of the recharge mechanic are going to be really, really key for playing as him effectively. Also, since he doesn't have like an electro field, we're gonna have to rely on special attacks or just his gun. So he wants to seize control of the uh, airship. To prevent it from crashing, I would hope. Okay, what on earth is this? So, he's got pervasion as well. Oh yeah, so we've got a bunch of robot soldiers now. I think he called them Mechanicus? So they clearly belong to a different faction. Oh, so his name is Akira. I don't know why they changed some of the names in uh, the uh, the translation. Oh, he's got an option.
Oh, sick! So are they going to act as a shield or like homing missiles or... We can press in the right stick to activate their skill, but... I'm fairly certain we'd want to save that, right? Yeah, they do act as like a shield. Let me reload that bullet. Guys, just based off of what I'm seeing, especially like the relative damage he does, I think I may prefer Copen to uh, GV. And notice that they're taking a more feminine form this time around. They can transform, I think. So they're going to serve as Copen's first boss? And oh my god, yes, that is a giant crystal erection. Zonda! Zonda is their name. That is horrifying and I love it. We're finally getting to fight Zonda. Or sometime soon, at any rate. Oh, so like using the mirror, they created, um, sort of an illusory form of themselves. If you are, uh, indeed some type of mirror, eh, then it's my duty to break you. Just smashing mirrors, alright. Okay, so we're going to have a different enemy here? Gotta say, um, I like the fact that Zonda is a more present, uh, and way more kind of Energe not energetic, uh, colorful personality than Nova ever was in the first game. Hopefully that keeps up. Like, just based off of what we've seen from them here and in the airship, it looks like our villains are going to be a bit more present, a bit more developed, and I personally like it in, uh games when antagonists are actually present with you as you navigate around stages or complete tasks. They don't just show up for a battle or a couple cutscenes and that's it. I always thought it was a nice touch that in Sly Cooper, the uh, villain of every world will address their minions at various points over a PA system as you progress through the, uh, the chapter. Just does a lot to, like, develop character, you know what I mean? Not the plot, but character, which I would argue is oftentimes even more important. Copen's gun is insanely powerful, I guess to make up for the fact that, uh, he doesn't really have, um, an electro field. Oh, the faz... Fazant? Fazant? So I take it that's going to be his boss. So its engines are weak? Or unstable, at least? Yeah, man, Copen is sick. Alright, we ready to take on the Phasant? Ooh! Yikes. That's just to get rid of our options, probably, right? No. No, that's to get rid of the floor! <laughs> okay, so I'm going to definitively state... This is a much better opening than the first games, which was perfectly solid on its own, but... Damn, this is a step up! I made this flash shield by analyzing the Azure Striker. It blocks physical projectiles when my weapon gauge is full. I see. Phasant. That's how it's pronounced. 
その建物を盾にして進むのがよろしいかああそっちおー、チェックダウン。そ、if I press the circle button, he can generate an electrical weapon, but it's some kind of beam. Oh, and his dash can、uh, take him in any direction. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, guys, I really dig this character. Speaking of the dash, w e gonna have to use it. No, 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 no. Ah. I thought I did that well enough, but I guess not. Oh, crap. Alright, yeah, yeah. Missiles are absolutely nothing to worry about. Oh, wait! I, I guess he's not lying. As long as we have bullets and aren't draining them,、uh, we're totally immune to projectiles like that. Right on, y'all. Let's actually fight this thing. Okay, so attack the lower half to disable its heavy weapons. Like so. There we go. Oh my god, his flash shield. Er.、Uh, his electro attack has to、uh, be activated by dashing into enemies, it looks like. But then once they're tagged, it drains them nobody's business. Jesus Christ, Copen. Hot damn! Guys, I'm sure this character is much more difficult to play in, like, you know, really high level. Um, strategy or、um, scenarios, but I just love the feeling of controlling it. So we're trying to save that little girl we saw at the loading screen, m i d a l And in order to do so, we've got to find a way to prevent the Seraph from crashing. Yeah, c o p e n s where it's at. Rank A. That's, that's good, I'll take it. We get eight little prize boxes. See, this is what an actual surprise mechanic is. Aggressor. The book is not yet closed on the Muse's story, and all remaining clues point toward Eden. Zonda said something about Eden or Eden's love as well. So we have yet another stage? Wow. Hell of an opening this time around. Oh, that must be one of our villains? What is that robot? No, can't worry about it right now. I have to save that girl first. So. Icarus Star, hey, how's it going?、Uh, welcome to the stream. This is our first time seeing you around, I believe.、Uh, they say Copen's gameplay is extremely fun. My higher times and scores are with him. Anyway, what's up? Not much. This is、uh, my first time with this game. We just、uh, cleared a z e r Striker Gunvolt 1, like about an hour ago. And I'm, I'm seeing how the sequel stacks up so far, like just based off of this intro, I'm absolutely loving it.、Um, And yeah, c o p e n s gameplay seems fantastic. A great addition to the series. This is a very worthy successor to、uh, like the Mega Man Zero ZX mantle. I'm really, really digging it. 
I took it down, and the girl seems to be okay, thankfully. That was no ordinary robot, and what's more... She almost reminds me of... Jewel. Icarus Star says I'm hyped for Gunvolt 3. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think it's primed for release on Switch. Is it later this year or sometime next year? Chao is a guy. And the, the really creepy dynamic between these two just continues. Okay, so now maybe we get to take on Captain Internet? Or at least, like, encounter him? Icarus Star says, Dunno, I think they only released a first look trailer for Gunvolt 3. Okay. Well, at any rate, it's gonna be fantastic stuff when it is released. I know they released, like, a side game last year, maybe? We unlocked the Just What Is She trophy? Damn. What should I do? Yeah, Icarus Star says Luminous Avenger 9 is a spin-off revolving around Copen. Oh, good stuff then. I'll definitely have to check that out. What is he doing there? So we're just going to lift the the massive airship aloft. So this may or may not be a full stage then, as much as it is like just an extended little cutscene. Heart laser. Hmm. Oops, again, didn't mean to skip that, but. I think I may actually try to play this one through with Copen first, because we can't counter the Seraph's engines at this rate. Not only is his damage output much higher, uh, but it looks like he's got way more options than GV does, at least to begin. Well, whoever it was saved our bacon. Now's my chance. And so I was able to shift the Seraph and avert tragedy. Icarus Star says, imagine being GV with the ability to instantly cook bacon via electrocution. Sounds great. Oh, it definitely does. Um... Really excited to see what our new roster of bosses are like. Oh. Oh, you're interesting. So, some kind of knight with, um, or, or somebody with the visual motifs of, like, a stereotypical knight with, um, frost powers. So there's going to be seven, like, principal stage bosses this time around, and presumably we get to fight them all, seeing as how we didn't get to fight Porzonda in the first game. I absolutely love that they were brought back 
out of all the characters from the first game to serve as an antagonist here. That and Zomba's voice actors are clearly having the time of their lives recording all of this. I... Okay. In keeping with everything associated with Jewel being kind of unsettling, she's now locked up in the love cage. You, you, you couldn't have just called it the Septimal Mirror to begin with, no? Alright. <laughs> oh. So it looks like... Icarus Star says, no, no, this is Zonda, everything is love. Oh, I know. I know, and I, I absolutely love them for it. But okay, so we're without... We're without Jewel now. I'm guessing this is where the other, like, AI idol is eventually going to come in, like, to serve as a, a stopgap for this. Right, yeah. I, I know for a fact in promotional materials, Zonda's normally depicted in their true form. Which is... Like uh, a young girl. <laughs> like the youngest of the Septimal Adepts from the first game, I think. The Oracle of Eden. Eden. Haruka ni sugreta chikara o mochi naga. Kono shunka ni mo. Muno ryuk shatachi ni hakuga yo ukitsu keru doho tachi. No ryuk shaga anshin shite kuraseru sekai o tsukuro. Right, okay, so. Sounds like these guys aren't quite advocating for the type of like. Adept supremacy that, uh. Actually, no, I'll. I'll uh, push back on what Copen just said. They're not advocating for the type of, like, adept supremacy that Asimov was at the end of the first game. They want to create, like, this, this sanctuary, this independent country, uh, of adepts and, and just free them from, uh, Sumeragi's control at all costs. So these are more sympathetic antagonists than the ones from the first game. それで救えるものはごくわずか。Zonda, and so much of this must just be like the color palette used for her design, which is very distinctive from everything else we've seen. Actually reminds me an awful lot of uh, the main villain of Mega Man Zero 2, who also used like a lot of like soft golds and like very vibrant like magentas and things like that in a game where there weren't many characters with those kind of designs to differentiate them from any other sprites on screen. <laughs> Ikura Star says we need Gunvolt and Smash to change my mind. Oh, I agree. I think this would be a great character to add to the roster. So it sounds like uh, Eden's forces 
stole a bunch of glaives, like the big great sword things from the first game that all of the Sumeragi adepts used to transform. Uh, presumably they don't need them, they just act as like a power enhancer. MC says, oh yeah, just electrify Pikachu. Or like charge up Pichu and actually make it a viable character. Oh, we're we're actually fighting the commander. Uh, okay. And this this is a fight we can win. This isn't. Oh damn! Whoopsie! I'm. This isn't like the uh, big max fight from. Was it Mega Man X Five or X Six? Where you're, like, supposed to lose the first serious fight against an antagonist, but, uh... No, we just beat his ass. Um... And given that I didn't play all that well, or even learn his pattern, probably shouldn't have. Icarus Star says this fight is possible to beat in less than a second. Jesus. Um, not a great showing for, like, the leader of the... The Guardians of Eden, but okay. I'm all but certain we're actually going to fight him properly later on. <laughs> oh, they like, uh, reverse engineered, like, inferior glaives. Okay. Yeah, much weaker than Sumeragi's. I'm guessing Captain Internet's gonna teleport him out of... out of the arena. Yeah, <laughs> This game's cast overall seems a bit more likable and well realized than the first games. Glad to see that despite everything, Copen's still like a xenophobic asshole. Would have thought he would have changed just a bit, but. Give me just a minute, guys. Sorry. Sorry about that, I heard. I hear some kind of like alarm going off somewhere around my apartment complex, and I heard like sirens like coming up and around. I was trying to see what was going on in case you know there was a fire or something. Doesn't appear to be the case. Uh. Um. MC says, who needs development when perfection's already been reached? <laughs> um, several characters. Um, Icarus Star says, Copen does get some development, but you learn to love him. And, uh, MC says, welcome back, thank you very much. And, yeah, Internet Boy teleports him away. So we still have a fraction of Jewel's power, meaning I guess the anthem still works. Just let and now she's a fairy. Okay. 
or even more of like a, a stereotypical fairy. So Anthem's going to be more powerful as we take down like each guardian and recover more shards, I take it. Icarusstar says, Internet Boy's easily my favorite boss. Um, they seem to have a lot of personality, so... Okay, we get a choice here to play as either Gunvolt or Copen, and they start you out, like, with Copen highlighted, so I... I get the distinct impression that they're kind of pushing you to, uh... to at least try his gameplay first. So that's what we'll do. Sure. Now this is just straight up Mega Man X, um, where each character, usually two, but in the last couple of entries three, would have their own distinct campaigns and character interactions with bosses and all that. I thought installing shards would cause a reaction, but so far, nothing. So the little girl is Copen's sister? Alright, I headed for the ward where Middle was staying. So she has to communicate. Yeah, she had to type out her words on a tablet. An operation she had as a child took her voice. Oh. But she's still really sick, and no one knows why. So she stays in a special facility owned by our family. She used to be elsewhere, but then Eden found her. I don't know why those bastards took her. And she doesn't remember anything from that time. She's some kind of incredibly powerful latent adept, I'm guessing. Yep, and Lola is his AI partner, I'm guessing. Somehow. Did the shards installed in Lola cause this? MC says, shut the front door. Yeah, I know, it's... Mm. <laughs> like, it's very charming after, after a fact, but... If so, why now? They didn't do anything before. Hmm. I think it's more an issue of, like, not dropping random F-bombs to raise the game's rating arbitrarily, but... Did Eden do something to Middle? But all of our tests didn't find a thing. Maybe her muse sensitivity is affecting her. Yeah, so she can, like, pick up on the, the special frequencies emitted by these weird AI things. None of our treatments did a thing for Middle. If this can help her, there's no time to waste. We have to examine the shards and learn what we can. Oh, oh, thank you for breaking the fourth wall and telling me to say, right. Alright, so really quickly, let's save.
And let's see, we have missions, loadout, synth. Let's just see what our crafting menu looks like this time around. Oh, we've got a ton of options to begin with this time around. Can we chat to, like, increase the likelihood of getting an Anthem analog again? She thinks I'm behind the changes to Lola, even though I have no idea what's happening. The shards do something to Lola, but as for what? I'm sure her health and the shards are connected, but if I talk to Middle with Lola around, Lola's chances of entering her new Ultra Mode increase, yep. Lola's specs are upgraded in Ultra Mode. That, plus my jacket, will let me power up as well. I should talk to Middle Offer to take full advantage. NC says someone is getting high on shards. Hey, if, if the gluttony boss from the first game were still around, that would definitely be happening right about now. Or Viper, because... I am going to drive the comparison between Viper, the, the AI fanboy boss, and Viper, the rapper, straight into the ground. What am I thinking? I should talk to her regardless. You feel a little closer to middle. So yeah, it's all the same stuff from the first game, except now we've got two series of four bosses, it looks like. Sorry about that. Um, so we've got... Um, we've got the boss that we just fought at the end of the prologue, it looks like. And three... I can give you absolutely nothing about, except Babel is a stage, once again. The, the elevator? Let's see. Oh, it's nice that you can now toggle storyline conversations in case you don't like want all that getting in the way. Um, actually, ladies and gents, right about now, this might be a good time to cut it for the day, if only because I do have some work to attend to. But tomorrow we'll be back. I can't fit in a second stream today, because, uh, going to be actually baking for a good part of the day. I'm baking, um, a pie for a friend's birthday that I'll be taking over tomorrow. Um, exciting, I know. Um, but I will be back tomorrow from probably about 2 to 5 with some more Azure Striker Gunvolt 2. I'm loving this game so far and can't wait to dig into it properly. Um, thank you very much, MC. Thank you. Um, and from 6 to maybe 8 or 9, we'll talk into Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin, also the best Dark Souls game. Prove me wrong. Um... <laughs> Really looking forward to that. Thank you, Icarus Star. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us this afternoon. Whether you're watching this live on Twitch.tv or after the fact as a VOD on YouTube, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you taking your time and sharing some time and yourselves with us uh, today. I Feel free to uh, visit us over on Twitch if you're catching this after the fact and follow our Discord, a link to which is permanently available in the description of my Twitch page to stay up to date with our schedule, which fluctuates wildly because I am a terribly, terribly disorganized person, and uh, join a very positive and fun-loving community uh, for plenty of, like, laughs and discourse. Thank you all so, so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care.